It's a matter of how badly do you want something. For me, it was not a fight against a disease. It was a fight for my survival. And I was not going to lose the fight. Absolutely incredible. At the height of his music career, a cellist from the world-renowned Philadelphia Orchestra was diagnosed with MS. Now, unable to play and with his medication not working, he took matters into his own hands. Arthur Chien brings us the remarkable story of Bob Cafaro. <laughs> Bob Cafaro wasn't born a crusader. His dream was a simple one, to play the cello and to play it well. It was a skill he started working on as a child, and by 1985, he was a member of the Philadelphia Orchestra. But the soundtrack of his life would take a sudden turn. Well, you're, you're trying to tell your muscles what to do, and, and they won't listen. In December of 1998, Bob started noticing numbness in one leg. Then he started going blind in one eye, and it didn't stop there. I started getting motion sick and I vomited and I couldn't keep food down, it was nearly a week. And I wound up hospitalized for severe dehydration. The next few months, it got worse. I couldn't, I could hardly move my hands. I was legally blind in both eyes. I could see silhouettes of people and that was it. Uh, I was incontinent, I had no physical strength, I could hardly walk, uh, everything was gone. His dream life had turned into a nightmare. After trying to play something that I knew well, I put the cello back in the case and I started crying. It was all gone, everything had been taken away. MRIs from 1999 show why Bob's body was collapsing. 50 active lesions on his brain and a huge lesion on his spinal cord. Eight months after his first symptoms, he was diagnosed officially with multiple sclerosis. Yeah, that's really the, the, uh, the big prize. And if you look, that's at the base of the brain in the beginning of the spinal cord, and that measures three and a half centimeters in length. A lesion, a lesion is normally a small white spot. This thing is science fiction. Bob was prescribed the MS drug that was on the market, but he was still going downhill, so he started researching. I could hardly see, so I got this big 21-inch monitor I had at the time, and I enlarged the letters huge so I could make out what I was reading, and that's when I found uh, the water cure, I looked at world rates, found the Okinawa Centenarian study, and I started researching the placebo groups of MS trials. The drug Bob was on helped 38% of MS patients, but a study showed 38% of the placebo group also showed improvement, convincing him his mind was the key to his recovery. And you can see the, the mind is able to do amazing things to the human body, you know, can do very destructive things. People get sick from stress, people die of a broken heart, the mind can heal the body as well. Stopping the medication, which was causing side effects, Bob started a meditation routine and made sweeping changes to his consumption. I basically gave up the lavish lifestyle that we're so accustomed to here with everything from alcohol, junk food, processed food, rich food, you know, high amounts of salt, fat, and sugar. I basically canceled my membership in that society. Taking a cue from cultures that live longer, Bob lowered his caloric intake, started exercising nearly every day, drinks three liters of water daily, and intermittently fasts for 16 to 18 hours a day, giving his body a chance to recover and to regenerate. When he eats, it's an organic plant-based diet. His body responded immediately. He got back to the cello. 14 years later, with trepidation, he decided it was time to take another MRI. The results, Stunning. When I went back, he brought them up on a screen and he said, you did the impossible because all traces of the disease were gone. From left to right, it's like the MRI of two different brains. Once, where every layer had lesions, by 2013, not a sign of a single one of them. When you look at this even now, like, can you believe that your brain went through that radical transformation? Yeah, it's something of a medical impossibility. It's, it would be uh, analogous to scarring on the skin that would disappear. So it's, it's considered an, an impossibility by the medical industry, medical community. To do the impossible, Bob took several steps to cure himself of MS, but it was his will that was the single most important medicine. It's a matter of how badly do you want something. For me, it was not a fight against a disease. It was a fight for my survival. And I was not going to lose the fight. Today, Bob lives in his New Jersey home with his wonderful wife, Teresa. On a mission to help others, he's written a book called When the Music Stopped to publicize how he recovered.
He writes a newsletter, gave a TED talk, and works one-on-one -on -one with MS patients to reclaim their lives. You go to a doctor with MS and they'll prescribe the latest drug, which slows down the progression of the disease in X number of patients. And to me, there are much more, there are many more answers out there. There is much more you can do. An especially relevant lesson given the ongoing pandemic. If you look at the current pandemic coronavirus, right, if you're in really good physical condition and your immune system is really strong, that's gonna make a big difference if and when you get sick with this disease. Timely advice from a man who has certainly earned the right to give it. With Bob Kafaro in Westmont, New Jersey, Arthur Chien, Fox 5 News. He literally did the impossible. Audrey, that guy, quite an inspiration. Very impressive, very impressive. Yeah, well, let's talk about this heat. I know you teased that there is some relief coming when